Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this video, I wanna share a very special instrument with you. This is, or was, <laughs> my grandmother's ukulele. And I'm gonna be giving you a nice look and listen to it. And I'm just, it's just one of my prized possessions. It's one of the only things that I asked for when she passed away. And it's a family heirloom and it's a treasure and it's an awesome ukulele. So I wanted to share it with you in this video. This is a Style 1 Martin ukulele soprano from, it's hard to date because they didn't have serial numbers at this time, but it's from the late 1940s through the early 1950s. So as of the making of this video, it's at least 70 years old, right around 70, give or take. And I'm gonna give you a close look at it in a second, but right now, how about a listen? So what I like to do to hear ukuleles for the first time when I'm buying an ukulele or I just wanna check them out is I actually hold them at the top of the neck like this, just suspend it, and then I strum it as if it's hanging. And that way I hear the full, the full resonance of it. Uh, because when we hold it against our bodies, it, it kind of mutes the sound a little bit, especially the back. So here's what it sounds like though. Um, and it's pretty much in tune. Now the strings on this are super old. And uh, one of the features about this that I actually don't like, I like mostly everything about it, including the, the patina and the age and the marks from playing. And, you know, I'll show you in a second, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but one of the things I, I'm not too crazy about is the one-to-one -one gear ratio. Well, there's no gear. It's the one-to-one -one ratio tuning pegs. And this is classic style from that era. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, but it's just kind of a hard to manage. So at the end of this video, I'm going to share a little secret with you about <laughs> an update. It's a brand new product. I'm not getting paid to talk about it, but it's a new product that I might try on this. Um, and I know I'm very aware of the collectability of this and the value of this, so I wouldn't do anything to harm it, to alter it, uh, but I may do a modification that's temporary to make it playable. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. Right now, I wanna show it to you in more detail. So we're gonna go to the overhead view and I'll do my best. I have, to, I have to keep it at the perfect height so it'll be in focus. But here we go, starting at the head. And you can see here, well, you have to read sideways, but it says Martin Company established 18, what is it, 33. 1833. Here are the tuning pegs that I was talking about. I'll try to give you a good look. I know it's a little hard. Uh, and one of the things about these ukuleles is they were all, of course, mahogany except for the fretboard. And look at that fretboard. And why does it look different than most other ukuleles? Well, for one thing, it's not black, right? Most fretboards are black, and that's because they're ebony. These fretboards were rosewood. And don't you love that? Look at this feature right here. Look at the grain there, I love that. And it's right on the fret. Um, this piece is probably ebony, I'm gonna guess. And then we have the, the saddle and bridge, the saddle and bridge. So the br a rosewood bridge, ebony saddle. But look at that, look at those marks on there. These are, all this here, these are gouges, but that was from my grandmother's playing. That's grandma right there, playing the ukulele. I think it's awesome. And uh, this ukulele has seen a lot of playing, a lot of wear over many, many years. You can see that it's got the tortoise shell trim. I hope that's faux tortoise shell, but it might be real, I don't know. It was the 1940s, 1950s. Here's the back, a little funky. It's got some little marks on there. I haven't really tried to clean it or anything. I just, I don't wanna do anything that might harm it or, you know, there's nothing wrong with a, a well-played instrument. So there's some little marks. I think it's paint or something. 
Uh, but I, I really haven't done much with it besides pick it up every once in a while and listen to it. And I, I play it once in a while, but honestly, I don't play it that often because of the tuning issue, the tuning pegs. It just doesn't stay in tune very well. Um, I have a lot of other ukuleles and I also don't want to damage it or break it, but I, I do want to enjoy it. Um, now down in here in the sound hole, you can see, I know it's not, it's a little hard to see, but it, there it says uh, Nazareth, Pennsylvania below the words Martin Company. Sorry, I'll try, I'm doing my best to give you a look. So it's, that's what it says down there, but that's all it says. There's no, there's no date, there's no serial number. So that is a Model 1, and we know it's a Model 1 because it has the Rosewood fretboard. It's also got two fret markers here. The Model 0, which was before this one, has one, two, three fret markers, one on each of those frets, but this one has the double fret marker on the, what is the seventh fret, I believe. Um, and here's another look at the head. Get in focus. There we go. All right, so that's that's the, the view of that. Now, um, you've heard it a little. It's got, I mean, it still sounds great, and these are old strings. So I'm probably gonna change the strings. Um, I've got an update, an upgrade that I, I'm gonna look at doing, and that is, I just went to a local music store, Kay's Music Scene, here, over here in Canoga Park, or near, or might be Northridge or Reseda, I think it's Canoga Park, near me. And I bought these, and I know you can't see them, I'm gonna pull this out so you can see. And these are, I'm excited about these, because these are called um, ratio tuning pegs. And I'll show you the overhead view in a second, but these are by a, a company called GraphTech. It cost me about $25 for a set of four. Let's go to the overhead. And these are geared tuning pegs. Where's the overhead there? So these will these will go in, mount into the uh, head. This is all composite material. There's no metal here. It's very, very lightweight. So we're not gonna increase the weight of the instrument and these have a six to one gear ratio. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. So these have a six to one gear ratio, which means um, gone are the days where you, t you turn the peg a tiny bit and the, the string uh, goes way sharp or flat. Um, this, this one to one thing, not cool, not okay, <laughs> not desirable. So um, I'm thinking about swapping these out. Now I wanna do it in a way, of course, that does not alter the, in the basic instrument because this instrument is highly collectible. Um, you know, whether you like the sound of Martins or not or whatever, it's just a highly collectible instrument. One of these sold a few years ago about, about like this, same model, same condition for about 900 US. Uh, and I imagine now that it's five years later, uh, they're probably going for a bit more than that. That's not that important to me. This is a family heirloom. I'm never gonna sell it. <laughs> but uh, I wanna take care of it. I don't wanna damage it in any way, um, you know, for the collectible r uh, reason and also just what it is. You know, it's a piece of history at this point. And I believe that, you know, these are things that we should cherish and take care of. So I'm not, b believe me, I'm not gonna do anything that would compromise it. If I can install those tuners though, uh, I will, because then it will allow me to enjoy the instrument even more. And I think if we can do both, I'm not here to, you know, my goal is not to put this in a glass case. Uh, my goal is to hopefully play it and enjoy it and, you know, honor my grandmother, my Hawaiian heritage. Uh, the legacy of Hawaii and all the ukulele players around the world. And so that's what I want to do. I want to share it. That's why I'm sharing it with you, uh, sharing a little bit about this journey, personal story of mine and connection to my family. Um, my, ho my grandmother is full-blooded Hawaiian, grew up in Hawaii, a lot of Hawaiian culture, uh, moved to California, 
where I was born and raised, but still I feel a lot of connection with the Hawaiian Islands. And uh, I want to remind us all, too, that even though this was made in Pennsylvania and, you know, Martin Company did a lot for the ukulele, um, I mean, it is a Hawaiian instrument, so, of course, you know, they're profiting and making uh, money, and that's okay. Still lots of great Hawaiian makers, but I want to remind us that the ukulele is a Hawaiian instrument. It comes from Hawaii. Don't forget that, all right? Do as much as you can to learn about the Hawaiian um, musicians, the Hawaiian ukulele makers, uh, King David Kalakaua, uh, what he did for Hawaiian music, Queen Lilio Kalani, what she did for Hawaiian music and the ukulele. There's a lot of history there that I'd like to invite you all to investigate and look into, all right? Thanks for joining me in this video and, and you know, witnessing uh, part of my ukulele journey. I'm Kalani, and this is the Ukulele Club channel. I'll be keeping you updated on the progress of Grandma's ukulele. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.